I'm kind of 50-50. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to Bundle Banter. Today we have the humble indie bundle number 21. Holy crap, 21? Are you sure? Somebody double check that. God, it is Humble's 10 year anniversary. Happy 10th birthday, Humble. Big double digits, making me feel super old now. Good lord. So, they've, they've put together some of the, the favorite indie games from over these, these past few years. And I'll be honest, I have most of them. <laughs> but if you're new to bundles, then this might be a decent bundle to pick up. In both the top and the bottom tier, there is one of my favorite games of all time in each one of those. So let's go ahead and check out which games are in these tiers. In the bottom tier for one dollar, we've got Hotline Miami, Beat Cop, Dust Force DX, and then you've got like a wallpaper pack and some coloring pages, which I guess thanks. <laughs> I probably won't be using those anytime soon since I got the wallpaper engine for wallpaper and uh, coloring. I mean. I guess if I had a printer, my kids might like it, but whatever. <laughs> Can't you mail me some paper? Dang. In the middle tier, the beat the average tier, we've got Moonlighter, 25% off Moonlighter Between Dimensions, and Gato Roboto. And there's also a mystery game. Oh my gosh, it will unveil in 6 days and 15 hours. But uh, luckily there was a leak for it, so we know that it is Hyperlight Drifter, which is a pretty decent game. In the top tier, my goodness, $15, what are you on about? That is exceedingly pricey for only two games, but we've got Hypnospace Outlaw and Starbound. Oh my god, Hypnospace Outlaw is so good. Starbound is also relatively good, although it has been bundled quite a few times before. But I digress, we will jump into these games, talk about each one individually. And of course, we will start it out with one of my absolute favorites. Ever, 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 Hotline Miami. Quite literally, the one game that made me decide to start making YouTube videos. Really. An energetic, pulsing soundtrack guides you through a colorful pixel art world as you don a rubber animal mask and murder everyone inside a given building as quickly as possible. Each of the masks offers a special ability, with some being vastly superior and others only offering boons that apply only in insanely specific circumstances. You can also roll through with no ability at all if you're really trying to prove something, but you better believe that you'll need all the help that you can get because this game is insanely difficult your first time through. And then you go back to improve your scores, and then you go back again, and before you know it, maybe around your fourth or fifth spin through, something clicks. And then you'll find yourself creating a symphony of violence and destruction. And then you'll find yourself logging onto Amazon to buy a set of rubber animal masks for yourself. And you tell yourself that they're just for fun, you know, maybe a little Halloween gag. But as you sit and stare into the lifeless eyes of that horse mask, you hear the ringing of a phone. Will you answer the call? I will! <laughs> I love Hotline Miami, dude. Next game up is Beat Cop. We talked about the Police Quest series in the Sierra Bundle video. You should go check that out. Or don't. It's not a very good bundle. But Beat Cop is what Police Quest always wanted to be when it grew up. Soaked in an 80s aesthetic and managing to capture the atmosphere of Brooklyn, New York. Or what I assume the atmosphere of Brooklyn, New York would be like. I don't actually know. This game allows a fairly large degree of freedom. Do you want to be a corrupt cop? Or are you trying to keep your nose clean? Either way, you're bound to piss somebody off. Oh, did I also mention that you're being framed for murder? Yeah, you've got to solve that. And the gameplay takes place over 21 days, so there is a definite ending, but you'll probably want to play again because there are a ton of different endings. It's a point and click, which you might know that I freaking loathe, but the difficulty and the amount of plates that you need to keep spinning somehow managed to draw me in. It's far from a perfect game, the controls are sort of clunky, and a lot of the side characters are just assholes for no reason, even if I'm doing my job well. Even the main character seems like kind of a dickhead, but there's nothing that really makes him a smooth or likable dickhead. Giggity. There's no redemption arc, either. You're just a cop, and therefore, you're just a fuckface. The one character that I liked, the one shining beacon of hope throughout this entire story, is the Donut Lady. Because, 
you're a cop, and of course, it's the donut lady. <laughs> Dust Force DX. Jesus, what a blast from the past. I'm having nostalgia trip all over this bundle. Ah, oh, this is a game that came out in 2012, and it was actually part of a deleted series on this very channel. Very few people know that. I don't like to talk about it. I created that series, though, because I just love the game, similar to Hotline Miami. How it looked, how it played, the art, the music, the smooth controls with a ton of different moves. And then I watched how smooth and easy some of the other people on YouTube made it look, and I got immediately embarrassed and deleted it. Part of me regrets that now because, looking back, almost everything I made in the first few years of my channel was embarrassing as fuck. But I digress. Dust Force DX has a level editor with thousands of player-made levels, an online leaderboard that I will never see the top of, and a feel-good premise about cleaning up messes whether you're the one that made them or not, for the good of society! There are four different characters with different attacks, jumps, fall speeds, so you can find one that is best suited for you. One of my favorite features in Dust Force is the replay feature, so you can watch exactly what the top scorers did on their leaderboard runs to get there. Of course, emulating that run is a lot more difficult than it looks, and because of the tight controls and manageable button layout, you'll have nobody but yourself to blame for failure. Dust Force is one of the most replayable games on this list, bar none, but it has been around for a very long time, so there's a fair chance that you'll already have it in your library. But if you don't, then yes, snag it. For one dollar, freaking snag it. Heading up into the middle tier, we've got Moonlighter. You'll play as a shopkeeper during the day, but Moonlight, huh? As a dungeon crawling adventurer at night. It's a very novel concept, but the intrigue of it doesn't last forever. How does the game hold up after the novelty wears off? Well, pretty decently, actually. Dungeons are themed, which is fun. The bosses manage to be diverse and interesting despite the extremely simple nature of combat. Roll, bow, sword, no magic, which I think is sad. The one exception to this is the last boss, which is more of a joke and not at all difficult. That really managed to butter my biscuit. After fighting for so long for that last epic boss encounter, they totally copped out. I'll be honest that it really put a bad taste in my mouth. New Game Plus is a thing if you can manage to maintain interest after that failed joke of a final boss. I personally couldn't. That's a shame because I really did enjoy the inventory management and sense of curiosity that came with entering a new dungeon. The shop parts were unique, but not exactly fun, in my opinion. They're of course necessary because you'll need coin to upgrade your gear. I'll be honest that by the end of the game, things had managed to become quite stale. It felt far too rinse and repeat, even with the ever-changing dungeon themes and layouts, but I think this could be a game that I would continue to come back to regularly for another fix of dungeon crawling, but, and I really hate to harp on this point, but it was the thing that I liked least about anything in this bundle. It truly felt like the last boss spit in my freaking mouth. I do hold grudges against games, and Moonlighter is another victim of my unforgiving nature. Gato Robato! Cat inside a mech suit? You have my full attention. This monochrome Meow Troidvania <laughs> is a pretty short ride, but it's packed with action. The humor seems a bit lol so random just for the sake of being quirky, but most of the jokes didn't hit home for me because it doesn't relate to anything else. If we're going for non sequitur humor, then just hit me with a good dick or fart joke. Mustaches are really only funny when they're adorning the face of your favorite bundle YouTuber's icon. And I ain't talking about bomb chew, goddammit. Uh, sorry. But yeah. Gato Roboto is a decent throwback, and that's both a good and a bad thing. It's good for nostalgia, but the bad part comes when you consider how uninteresting the enemy attacks really are. Bosses are the major draw to this title, but the rest of the game just feels like filler in between the bosses. If it was made into a boss-centric or boss rush game, then I could really get into it. As it stands, it's... Mm, serviceable. Nothing to write home about. By the time I finally felt like I was hitting my stride and getting some really meaty powers, the game was completely over. While I enjoyed my time with Gato Roboto, it undoubtedly could use another coat or two of polish before it can be counted among some of the other greats in this bundle. As it stands, this game feels like a demo for what could be a very promising game. I'll be real with you and say that if you're looking to scratch that nostalgic itch, I reviewed Rad Raygun for Indie Gamer Chick on Twitter. Gato Roboto is alright, but it is extremely dwarfed by the other greats in this bundle. Hyperlight Drifter! 
An indie adventure with a pixel art style and a great soundtrack, the combat is probably my favorite part of this title. It feels smooth and natural and impactful. It's a bit strange to catch your bearings the first time you go to boot this title up because there's no dialogue in the game. You're dropped onto a strange world and left to figure things out for yourself. Which direction do you head first? Oh, you got your ass kicked trying to go west? Guess you should try another path. This game embraces trial and error, and I think that's something that plenty of games are missing nowadays. You won't get your hand held, and I think that leads to a greater sense of satisfaction once you finally get something figured out. There are plenty of treats and secrets hiding around what seems like every single corner, and that's a great thing. Having trouble with a certain part? Backtrack and hunt for power-ups. The enemies are done well, but the bosses, of course, are the biggest draw for me. There are eight of them, and they are all equally glorious. I never thought I'd sing the praises of a game not giving direction, but we're in a very different age than the SNES era that I grew up in, and all this harkens back to that, but on a much grander scale. I'm not sure if this adventure will stick for everyone, but for me, it's exactly what I wanted before I even knew I wanted it. Hypnospace Outlaw in the top tier. This bundle is truly an anomaly. Two point and clicks that I legitimately enjoy. I guess there's an exception to every rule, or even two exceptions. Dare you travel back to the late 90s to hunt down some dastardly cyber criminals? There are probably some viewers who don't even remember these glory days of the internet, but suffice to say that it was a veritable wild west. You'll start out frying some small fish like copyright violators and distributors of illicit images. And then you'll start to move up the food chain and hunt down virus creators and big dollar black market deals. Eventually, you'll discover a massive cyber conspiracy that I won't go into because I truly think that everyone who grew up in the 90s should play this game. Forget all those Instagram posts that are like, You're only a 90s kid if you remember Rugrats. Fuck that. Fuck Tommy. Fuck Angelica. Fuck Phil, Lil, Dee Dee, Stu, Spike, you're cool. Chucky also gets a pass. Know why? Because if I make a shitty Instagram meme that says, Only 90s kids will remember Hypnospace Outlaw, Chucky is the only Rugrat socially inept enough to actually get it. With as much time as I spent trying to escape from shitty dial-up internet, it's actually so refreshing to go back to it in the form of a game. The puzzles are logical and easy enough, but the aesthetic and the story are what really drives this game into the tier of absolutely godlike. The end of the game is abrupt, but the post-game kind of fixes that, so yeah, keep on playing. Question everything you thought you knew, and dive into Hypnospace. Starbound. Ah, Starbound. Another classic that made its way onto this channel in a collab with my buddy Playintosh. I do miss him terribly. Hope you're doing alright out there, guy. Anyways, when we played Starbound, it was a pretty bare-bones experience, and unfortunately I have to say that it hasn't progressed very far beyond that point in its final release. There was an opportunity for a massive amount of world building as you explore an endless amount of planets, but as it stands, the history of each race is just contained in a series of books that serve as exposition dumps. There are slightly different farming and building aesthetics, which I think is a nice touch. There are also a good deal of weapons in this game and enemies, but they all feel kind of similar. So the only major change comes from the looks or the stats. It's not all doom and gloom exactly. The game itself is really sweet, even if it's been bundled a few times before. Whether you're solo or with friends, you're bound to see stars. See what I did there? Now could you please forget what I did there? <laughs> Exploring the universe is always a good time. Plenty of goodies to find, rare spawns to battle, ooh, and did I mention the absolutely staggering amount of mods and workshop content. Woo! Now you can enjoy that classic Skyrim gameplay loop of modding the game until it breaks and then remodding it, but never actually playing the game itself. Just kidding. Starbound is a great title that will allow you to progress from a space scrub into a god of battle with the best weapons and armor and base out there. And then you can lay waste to civilizations. You can also play nicey nice if you want, but that just isn't how I do things. So, is this bundle worth it? Hmm, I'd say that heavily depends on how many games you have already. Hypnospace Outlaw, it definitely is the best. <laughs> I freaking love it. 
but 15 bucks is a lot to ask. I just don't know. Hotline Miami in the $1 tier is absolutely a shoe in and then you also get Dust Force and Beat Cop with it. Hey, hey, for a dollar, you, you can't beat it. Once you get up into the second and third tier, mm, I just don't know. I'm not as convinced, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've, I've played these games. They're all really old school. They're years old already. And I'm not talking a couple years, I'm talking half a decade, you know, so... Uh, I'm kind of 50-50. As far as which games are my favorite, Hotline Miami, boom, takes the cake. No, no contest. Hypnospace Outlaw would come next, then Dust Force. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter after that, followed by Beat Cop, then Starbound, then Moonlighter, and finally bringing up the rear in the meh tier, we've got Gato Robato. So as for me, I'm going to give this bundle the old skip because I have far too many games and I have every single game in this bundle. Which might seem sad to some people, but <laughs> it makes the choice really easy for me. I hope you guys will let me know what you decided to do, because I am quite conflicted. These games, they really are awesome, but it is a small amount of games for a larger price tag than we're used to. So I just, I just don't know if it can really be justified. But definitely snap up that one... One dollar tier if you're missing anything in it. Why not, you know? But anyways, friends, I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. This has been another Bundled Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, with the humble indie bundle number 21. Happy birthday, bundle. God, I'm getting so old. I've got to go make my will or something. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We got giveaways going on the Discord. We've got three patrons currently. Radim is Cisco, Damon Darkstar, Nico the Legend, my boys, for realsy reels. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you haven't liked, comment, subbed already, I hope that you'll do it. Maybe share the video around if you know some people who are just getting into the Steam game game. Steam games game. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and maybe they can snatch this bundle up. Because there really are some great titles in here for people who uh, don't lurk the internet daily, I guess. Anywho, I shall see you in the next one. Thank you, as always, for listening, friends. Take care of yourselves out there. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye!